Magento basics. So, our first learning section. Uh, this section is broken up into different lessons, and you'll see this at the beginning of each section. We try and group things topically for you. Uh, first lesson, OOP MVC, so that'll be the uh, review uh, for some of you, and for some of you it may be a refresher, and for some of you it may be, wow, this is all new to me. Uh, so this is, uh, this is an important lesson really just to make sure that we're all on the same uh, conceptual footing uh, from which we can then start to go into the structure of the application itself. Uh, move on from there into the event-driven architecture, uh, which really just makes sense once I start explaining it. Um, and then uh, we get into around lesson three and four, it's where we really start to get into you know, how all this stuff is, is, is sort of fleshed out in, in the Magento world. Okay, so uh, OOP and MBC concepts. Procedural versus object-oriented programming. Of course, a system like Magento uh, uses object-oriented programming as a, as a means of, of keeping code organized and keeping it modularized. Basically, we're facilitating modularization. So this is opposed to uh, procedural, uh, procedural calls, and I would say that um, does anyone, is anyone kind of fuzzy on why Magento would be object-oriented versus using procedural code? Everyone kind of appreciate the difference? You know, I mean, probably the very first thing you did in PHP was, you know, a bunch of functions and, uh, you know, script, you know, your, your request hits a script and that script just does something and it just goes straight out. Well, you know, the nice thing about object-oriented programming is that we're actually able to uh, encapsulate functions and representation of objects and, uh, and the things that they have to do in, uh, in the set classes and use those classes uh, as, a, as an interface to each other. And then that also kind of gives us this, this meta environment in which, we can, uh, in which we can play. So um, you'll see some of these throughout the course. Um, this is Gang of Four. This is classic Gang of Four design pattern. Everyone familiar with Gang of Four? No? There was a, a great book that if you're a programmer, you just simply have to have on your coffee table to impress your guests. It's called Design Patterns. And uh, there were these, these four, four folk who got together, and they, they, rec they recognized in their programming tasks that they were doing the same kinds of things again and again. And what they did was they distilled several different, uh, several different patterns and documented them in this book. And it really is a seminal work in, um, in the programming world. You don't have to have read the book to work with Magento nor do you necessarily need to um, know this, but it does help to understand that, that these, these kinds of things were considered when Magento was being, uh, was being created. So now that I've told you about that, if, if any of you really have, have an idea about using factory methods to create objects, I should tell you that Magento has its own take, as it often does with design patterns, with MVC, uh, it's, uh, it's really it's quite, a, quite a unique framework all around. Um, but this slide really is just here to, for, for those people who are used to classic, uh, classic design pattern examples, uh, just to say Magento has its own take, and we'll show you the ins and outs of that during this course. And similarly, uh, the GRASP design patterns, you can, you can wiki this and uh, learn all about it. This information is not... Uh, th these concepts... These concepts are handy to know because they, they can help you as you go to design your own modules and start to craft, uh, craft solutions. It's good to pause and think, okay, well, if I do this here, how am I going to be able to build a nice interface? Or does this class know too much about another class? Um, this, is, this is the scope of, of the GRASP pattern and, and how, um, how Magento tries to solve it. Um, and how Magento 2, I believe, will solve it very well. Um, so, all right, MVC, model view controller. Everybody familiar with the different areas of model view and controller? Okay, we'll be, uh, we'll be going over that a little bit more. Hey, can you? All right, so MVC, uh, pros and cons. Well, obviously, the pros are you, you have nice, structured modules. Uh, everything is separate for the most part, in Magento. Um, you can generally uh, debug MVC applications a little bit easier. 
Uh, you, can, you can find the problem. You know where, where to group certain tasks. The cons, of course, are performance. You know, generally, you might, you might have five, six, seven um, classes involved or files involved in rendering a single page. So there's some overhead. Uh, Magento, uh, especially Magento 1, the current version that's out, um, has, has progressively dealt with these issues of, of, of performance and um, has progressively added more functionality. Enterprise Edition, for example, has a full page cache, which, uh, which speed things up tremendously. So um, this is always out there with, um, with MVC. And, and in the case of Magento, uh, there's actually an additional layer in there in the V, and we'll be discussing that actually in a couple lessons. One of my favorite parts of Magento. So this slide, all right, so we have our little model view controller diagram. And typically, it's pretty nice, I know. Um, typically, uh, business logic is represented, you know, among all these classes. But the big takeaway from this slide and something to always remember, especially when you're making your own modules, is uh, Magento, I would actually notch this out here because Magento uses thin controller approach. Uh, business logic is, um, is relegated to the view and a bit to the model. So your models are your, your entities that you're representing in the system. And the view, though, which is a little bit different than a lot of MVC systems, the view is the one that actually will initialize models if it needs it. So if you've got a recently viewed products block, well, that block could exist on any given route in your system. So if you had to tie that to controllers to set up all that information, then you would be stuck duplicating a lot of code all throughout your application. makes much more sense to say, hey, I want the, I want the recently viewed products block. And the view itself will go out if, and grab the data if it already hasn't been instantiated somewhere and then make it available for the templates. Does it kind of make sense? So that's, that's, um, I think that's one of, the, one of the areas where people who are coming from other systems can get to be a little bit, um, maybe a little, it, you, you kind of have to unlearn something uh, to, to, to do things the Magento way because the, the route is... The route is sort of an arbitrary thing, and what really matters is the blocks that you configure to show up in different places. So, more about the view. The view is, is more of a, a, it's a, it's a view model. Uh, I really, actually, I really like this term because views, in a way, are their own um, self-contained little application. We have this thing called the layout XML. Is anyone, who's got the experience with layout XML so far? <laughs> who's... Who kind of hates layout XML? <laughs> I used to hate it too. I used to, uh, I used to really just, I don't understand where, which, which layout files should I put this in. Uh, they're, they're, it's, it's not, it's not an, uh, an intuitive system um, when you first look at it. But once you get to know it, it is actually incredibly powerful. It is, it is, it is my favorite part of, uh, of Magento's MVC Im implementation. Uh, it really, and hopefully by the end of this course, by the end of this course, you really should understand layout XML. So, um, typical MVC flow. Uh, the controller uh, gets the request. Um, and then, well, really the controller gets the request. The, the layout is consulted in Magento. And the view will actually uh, grab the model. Uh, the model, of course, is responsible for, you know, Representing, uh, representing things in your system, and also for storage, retrieval, and, and, and putting things in. So a uh, model actually has a, a few different layers in Magento, and of course we touch on all of that. But to, the thing to remember here for MVC and Magento is that the request hits the controller, uh, then the controller through layout XML or directly in the controller. We'll show you both ways. The view... Uh, the, the, the blocks of the view are called in a scope, and they will set up the models that they need. And here is a nice flow chart of how that works. So again, browser hits the server. The system evaluates its configuration, either from cache, or uh, if you have caching disabled, we'll uh, evaluate it every time. Uh, and then we get into our controller layer, our controller We'll kick off the layout. Layout is the uh, layout's the thing where all the blocks against which all the blocks are created and assembled. 
So the layout is basically this, this meta environment in which, uh, in which the blocks play. Uh, blocks call their models, and models can reach down in the database, get our information back, and we render. So by the end of the day tomorrow, you all will be pretty good experts in, in this whole flow. Okay, so our first exercise. <laughs>